All right, so welcome to another video on Stokes' theorem. What we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to look at the problem in which we have a curve C that is oriented along some plane z equals to 2 minus y, and then we're asked to find the line integral of that curve C with respect to the vector field minus y squared x z squared. And they tell us that C is essentially just the intersection between the curve the cylinder x squared plus y <coughs> squared equals to 1 so it is just a cylinder that extends to infinity on both sides and we have the the plane z equals to 2 minus y which is oriented in this direction so in this case we could evaluate this if we knew a parameterization for c but the problem with that is that it is not only a, an ellipse in this case it is an ellipse but also it is varying with respect to set, so parameterizing this would be a little bit complicated if we were to use just the simple knowledge we have of parametric curves. So one thing we can do is, we can, instead of evaluating this, we evaluate the circulation, or essentially just the curl of F with respect to the surface, so dot product with surface S, and this is going to give us the integral, or the line integral, of the curve C. So we're going to apply Stokes' theorem to simplify this. So what does this actually mean? Well, we notice that here the intersection happens with that. So if we actually create an area right here, then that area is going to be oriented along some normal vector n. So we notice that that area is actually, the normal vector is going to be oriented in the same direction as the normal vector for the surface uh, set equals to the 2 minus y. So what we want to do with that is, well, now we're going to have uh, to calculate the curl of f. So we start off by curl of f here. So what is this going to be? Well, we draw our i, j, and k components. Then we know this is going to be partial of x, y, and z. And then this is going to be fx, fy, fz. So let's see what we get here. So for the ith component, we're going to have this times that. So we have, we're going to differentiate the z component with respect to y, that's going to be 0. And then differentiate the y component with respect to z, that's also 0. Then we're going to have the jth component. So we're going to differentiate this with respect to x, that's going to be 0. And then differentiate this component with respect to z, that's also 0. And then the kth component is going to be this times that. So we differentiate this with respect to x. That's 1. And then we differentiate this component with respect to y. So that's going to be minus 2y. And in this case, that's going to become plus 2y. So it turns out that this curl of that vector field is going to be represented by the vector field 0, 0, 1 plus 2y. All right, so now the next thing to do is we need to find out what that surface ds is. We need to somehow find the normal vector to that. So we know that the element of vec uh, element of the surface, uh, oriented surface S, is going to be equal to the normal vector to that surface times the area that that um, particular area here. So basically we're going to multiply that area by the normal vector, and that's going to give us the element ds. All right, let's see what that gives us. Well, it turns out that when we're using Stokes' theorem, it is possible to project this onto another plane. So we can easily project this curve or this area onto the area here on the xy plane. And the reason we can do that is essentially this is the same as taking the circulation of that because from a circulation only takes into account how you're going around a particular uh, plane, but basically going around this way is the same as going around here only at a tilt angle. So what we can do instead is since the surface is oriented in this direction we can say that okay let's draw another normal vector and let's call this one n2 let's call this one n1 and now we're gonna take this area instead which is going to be just the area of a circle so we're going to project S onto the 
domain D, which is just this area here on the XY plane. So basically we're going to have the XY plane, the circle going around like that. Now we have the curve going this way. And this is going to be represented by X squared plus Y squared less or equal than one because we're taking the whole area inside that circle and it has radius one. All right, so now in order to do this, we need to find a parametrization for this. So the easiest thing to do is to use polar coordinates. So X is going to be equal to R cosine theta and then Y is going to be equal to R sine theta. And remember, this is only an element of area, so we don't re really need a set component here. We just have X and Y. So now what we do is we take our curl This is going to be equal to the curl with respect to the normal vector 2 and then dA. Okay, so what is this going to be? Well, we know this is going to be equal to 0, 0, 1 plus 2y. And then the normal vector here well, it is just a normal vector that is pointing upwards along the set direction and it has no component on X and Y. So that's just going to be 0, 0, and 1 times dA. And it turns out that this is going to give us 1 plus 2Y dA. Now we need to perform the param We Since we changed this to polar coordinates, we just plug those values in. Now what we need to do, of course, is we need to define the limits on R and theta. So in this case, we have a circle of constant radius center at the origin. So R is going to go from 0 to 1. And theta is going to go all the way around. So that's 0 to 2 pi. And the element of area in polar coordinates is R dr d theta. So now we write the integral in the following way. And we're going to change it to polar coordinates. So we write the theta first, then r, 0, 1. And here we're going to have 1 plus 2 times r sine theta times r dr d theta. And then this is going to become integral from 0 to 2 by 0 to 1 of r plus 2r squared sine theta dr d theta so this is going to be 0 to 2 pi of r squared over 2 plus 2r cubed over 3 sine theta from 0 to 1 and now what we're going to have is we're going to have 0 to 2 pi of 1 over 2 plus 2 over 3, so half plus 2 and 3 sine theta d theta because everything else is going to be 0. And now, okay, so we integrate this with respect to theta, so what's that going to be? This is going to be theta on 2 plus this is actually going to be minus because sine becomes minus cosine, so minus 2 and 3 of cosine of theta and now that's from 0 to 2 pi so now we're going to have 2 pi on 2, that's pi minus 2 and 3 of cosine of 2 pi, which is going to be just 1 minus 0 minus 2 and 3, cosine of 0 is also 1, so this is just 2 and 3. So now this becomes plus, and then this cancels out with that, and we're left with just pi. So it turns out that the line integral of this particular vector field along the curve C is just going to be pi. So we just find the line integral on this tilted curve C by projecting that onto this xy plane 
and then applying Stokes' theorem to get the, the circulation of that vector field, the, the curl of that vector field, and then we integrate it just using double integral. So we can know that this actually works both ways. So it, it serves to simplify problems that may require us to calculate this point. We cannot really parameterize the curve because maybe we don't know how to do it or it's a little bit too complicated. So there are always ways around certain problems. So I think that as long as you understand the main theorems and as long as you understand how to perform those uh, parametrizations and the connections between maybe surface integrals and line integrals, uh, you can solve virtually any problem in vector calculus.